hat hier so ein kleines Leben und man, äh, man probiert da irgendwie so durchzukommen. Wenn man sich über die Kräfte und die Energie da draußen im Weltall Gedanken macht, dann rückt das vieles zurecht. Die Dimension, auf der da Energie stattfindet, ist halt einfach so groß und eigentlich so, äh, so schwer zu fassen. Ähm, das verschiebt die Skala von allen Dingen. Alle sind halt sehr daran gewöhnt, Energie einfach so zu benutzen. Und keiner mag Einschnitte hinnehmen. Und man reflektiert halt sehr wenig, weil Energie einfach naja, für die meisten Menschen als gegeben hingenommen wird. Wir sind mitten im Regenwald und bis letztes Jahr gab es hier zu diesem Dorf gar keine richtige Straße. Bei Regen konnte man quasi gar nicht hin und zurück. Und das ist ein Dorf mit 800 Einwohnern, die halt zum großen Teil einfach immer noch vom, vom Urwald leben. Das ist tatsächlich absurd, weil hier ist Strom ganz nah am Dorf dran und es wird nicht verteilt bis zu den Haushalten. Das ist halt nachvollziehbar, dass sie nach einer Alternative suchen und das ist halt ein Stromgenerator, der mit Benzin oder Diesel angetrieben wird. Ne? They were promised energy from a long time ago, and they were actually given electricity uh, through the form of each house having its own individual solar panel system. Um, so it was installed in the first place? It was installed as part of a nationwide exercise throughout villages similar to this throughout the country. Uh, when the systems were set up, um, the people of the village, not only did they buy light bulbs and phone chargers, they bought television sets. Blenders. All right, they fans. put everything on it. Yeah, I think, you know, if you do not educate the people on how to use the system properly, yeah. if you buy an electric kettle, bro, and you try to charge, you know, hot water <laughs> using a solar panel, it's not yeah, the they right... They don't way. have a really good understanding of how much energy is stored in the battery yeah. and which devices you should power and which you shouldn't, got it? Yes, that's right. <laughs> Ada siapa-siapa di sini ada soalan? Kalau nak tanya, jangan malu-malu. So, apa charge controller ni akan buat? Dia akan pastikan siapa boleh jawab, saya bagi gula-gula depan. Betul? Tapi kita nak ambil cahaya matahari waktu siang, simpankan ke dalam bateri supaya boleh digunakan waktu malam. Solar panel ni, how, what can it power this? Tell what? Uh, ini boleh uh, charge your telephone. Ah, satu telefon cukup untuk satu telefon. Bila direct pasang, maksud dia? So, 
Sekarang sistem ada I think we're going to see if she learned what okay, so we taught at the workshop uh, okay. um, and just to see if she can go through the steps <laughs> and whether she does to it see right. where the failure is. Okay. Yeah, the system was okay for 10 years. Okay. And the past four years, it just, was working. just stopped working. Okay. Let's see if we get some good readings on the battery, yeah. then... So, let's have a look at the inverter. Oh, let's go on, yes. Oh. <laughs> so this means your battery is really good. Okay. So to pick up, what to... Nobody knows how to fix this here. Is it because it's too complicated or too expensive to get the parts okay. or what's what what's missing? Okay. So Dina tahu mengapa orang sini tak tahu? Adakah sebab benda ni susah sangat ke? Adakah sebab dia mahal sangat ke? Kenapa orang tak tahu? Apa yang susah? Apa kesusahan untuk tahu? Susahlah takut nanti kena dia punya elektrik tu. Takut nak sentuh. Oh takut nak sentuh. Nanti rambut pecah. Okay Sibu. So. Oh, yo. Betul, betul, betul. Yeah. When we first started doing our work, people laughed. They say, why are you doing charity? Yeah. You know, yeah. business is about making money. Yeah. Why are you wasting your time? Yeah. What are you doing fixing solar panels in orang asli villages? You know, in the grand scheme of things, we don't really make that much impact just directly from doing that work mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. However, the snowballing comes when more and more people take this up. And that's BGBG's story. We want to be the little thing. And this little thing is the one that we want to help make the big things work. And we hope that when people see us doing this, they get inspired too to try this out themselves. It's is halt unglaublich, wie wenig energy sie verbrauchen. Also es ist halt total krass, mit wie wenig Energie sie klarkommen und dass kein Energie oder eine Kerze oder ein Solarpanel, was echt nicht groß ist, reicht, um ein gutes Leben zu leben nach deren Maßstäben. Und, und vielleicht sollten wir halt dahin gucken und sagen so, ja, vielleicht ist es ein tolles Beispiel und das mal auf uns anwenden. Malaysia hier anguckt, dann ist irgendwie zu 90 Prozent fossile Energieträger, Kohle, Gas. Und natürlich kann ein Land auch größtenteils erstmal nur das machen, was irgendwie an Ressourcen da ist in dem Land. Aber das ist ehrlich gesagt nur die Hälfte, weil auch ein Land wie Malaysia mit der zum Beispiel mit der Sonneneinstellung, die man hier hat, könnte einen ganz anderen Pfad beschreiten. Aber wenn ich den größten Profit mache darüber, dass ich fossile Energieträger verbrenne, ja gut, dann wird es halt auch weitergehen. Das ist relativ logisch. Yeah, 
So this is what we call a heat recovery hybrid. The heat is actually being recovered from the uh, condensing unit or the exhaust, yep. Yep. Uh, the exhaust side. Yep. So with this, um, it helps to create a very uh, energy efficient air conditioning mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. So we, we, when we compare the actual energy consumption is um, like half of the normal aircon. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. incredible. So you buy something which is already existing and then you put in your technology? Yes, that's right. Okay, I come from the uh, software uh, engineering background. In the world of IT, there is no limits. The only limit is only um, money. Mm -hmm. You know, when yes. you are in a virtual world, you just do. When I started this business, the engineers tell me, this is impossible, what you're you do, what you're trying to do. But when we managed to get that savings on that uh, first, actually it was until night, we were working until night. Yeah. And then when we, when we look at the ampere meter, when we look at that, and then we test the temperature in the room, that, <laughs> yes. oh, we, got the, we got the temperature, we got the pressure, we got... Oh, no, nice. no, this is it. No. <laughs> that was it. That was like um, five years ago. Eh? Oh, right. mm, yeah. Yeah, probably you will never forget that evening, right? Oh, <laughs> never forget that evening. So, so what, what's, what's the secret? What do you change? What's the secret sauce in here? Okay, um, yes, obviously there is a secret. <laughs> <laughs> Mm, but I I won't talk about it. Good. <laughs> I find a lot of challenges in trying to build my business, the market, uh, the business scenario is very much geared towards, uh, you know, a patronage type business. In other words, a business of favours, yeah. you know, you do favours, you to get others. this, okay. yeah, favours to uh, certain influential or powers uh, that be and uh, you will have uh, a much more better position for your business. And this is a difficult part because um, as uh, an entrepreneur, and I'm more on the technology side, uh, I, I like to focus more on the um, ideas, innovation, crea creation, creating things, and knowledge, uh, skills. But um, this, these things, you know, uh, all these uh, people who ask for deals and all that, <laughs> because I'm I'm yeah. a startup and yeah. an entrepreneur, yeah. I don't have money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and uh, I want to bring a new kind of business. One thing I do know that if you use energy concern, the environment will be affected. When the environment is affected, the climate will be affected. When the climate is affected, the whole earth can be affected because of the change of temperature and everything. And this is serious matter. is my customer yes. and he is the owner of this resort, uh, Eco Resort. Yeah. As a policy, we decided that we should go green. Yes. Because we want to minimize the usage of uh, uh, unnecessary usage of energy. Yes. And we do not want to use any any air conditioning. Yes. That was our first initial uh, agreement in the company. Yes. But last year, for about four months, there's no rain here. Four months. Wow. Everything is dry and I have no choice. Because people come and visit here, yeah, they it. find that it's too hot. Yeah. But we still need to do to survive. Mm -hmm. So the only thing is we settle for uh, something 
which is not 100% aircon energy that much, but at the same time, safe energy and enough to keep people happy. So that's how we look around for all these things. And then you come along. Yeah. <laughs> that's how we, we start off. Lah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I see. Uh, this is the kind of um, customer that I imagine uh, one who is aware of yes. the environment, who is uh, you know, sensitive about um, the climate changes, the, the environment issues. And, and when he contacted us, it's just like a, an absolutely wonderful opportunity. Yes, it is. I mean, having then the first customer makes it simpler for the next customers because they yeah. can just follow, right? They, yeah. There's one who did it already, yeah. and you yeah. can point to and these guys, yeah. and here is the case study, mm -hmm. and that's what we have been doing, and this is why he actually, with his philosophy, yeah. can actually brought this, and then other people can, can, can follow, because I think in itself, it is a good thing, and other people like want this too. And I think what's great about the product is like now if you that you have iterated it and simplified it and make it more compact yeah. it is actually something most of the people can afford or actually pays off yes, after yes. after after a short time yes that's right yeah. Yeah. ich glaube da anzusetzen ist halt etwas sehr schlaues weil ähm, ich keine abhängigkeiten habe also wenn ich eine maschine baue die einfach irgendwie 50 Prozent weniger energie verbraucht dann tausche ich die, die Maschinen durch und ab dann ist es so. Da brauche ich nicht auf den Netzausbau äh, warten oder auf irgendwelche anderen Regularien. Das verändere ich und dann ist es sofort gut. Und generell ist es natürlich viel besser, wenn ein Kraftwerk gar nicht erst gebaut werden muss, weil ich es gar nicht erst brauche. Und ich glaube, wenn man das noch kombiniert mit den Prognosen, was bis 20, 50, 10 Milliarden Menschen auf der Welt leben, ist halt ganz klar, dass glaube ich, Energiesparen genauso wichtig ist wie der Umbau auf regenerative Energien. Also Effektivität ist einfach was, worauf wir, glaube ich, zukünftig viel mehr achten müssen. Sonst würden wir das gar nicht stemmen können. Energie ist das, was man aufwenden muss, um aus Möglichkeiten Realität werden zu lassen. Aristoteles nannte es Energia in seiner Sprache und daraus ist später Energie geworden. Und ehrlich gesagt ist ich da eine Parallele zu Startups oder einer Firma bauen. Man hat halt eine Idee, also etwas, was sein kann in der Zukunft und man muss Arbeit aufwenden, um sie Wirklichkeit werden zu lassen. Und wenn man Arbeit mit Energie gleichsetzt, dann, dann stimmt das, finde ich, auch heute. Also man muss sehr viel Energie in etwas reinstecken, damit es werden kann, also wachsen kann. Immer geht es um, finde ich, die Möglichkeit, etwas zu verändern, etwas zu machen, etwas zu verwandeln. All that energy came from one single point, once upon a time. has to have a reason why we can afford to lose so much energy. Because fossil fuels are cheap. Because that we don't see the consequence in our lifetime, that's why we don't give a... We don't see the yeah. externalities. There's no, like, like, when you, like, burn fossil fuels, you don't see, like, the environmental damage that's happening. You don't see the, like, the ice caps melting. You don't see, like, all the others, like, the pole. Yeah. The effect is you can't see right away. It's hard to bring these things into connection, right? It's easy to overlook that, right? Because it comes for free in a way. You know, you pay your bills in the end of the week and that's it. And like, if you can afford a hundred ringgit or two hundred ringgit, then you don't really care. Yeah. But how much matter actually went to creating that energy mm. is very far, far removed from us. We don't really see yeah. uh, where it comes from. We came up with a concept of an energy playground to push Malaysia towards the renewable energy field. Like. Hey! 
we have teams working in education. <laughs> you did this. Homemade. Homemade. Oh, self-made shoes. Yeah. <laughs> and we have uh, teams working in technology, uh, teams working in fabrication over here in the factory. We have teams doing sustainable fashion, making uh, sexy products from waste materials. Nice. Uh, we believe 120% in this energy playground and this, this is what we want to do. Yet sometimes, you know, we just have to get distracted with other jobs uh, and, you know, because we got to yeah, pay the bills. Yeah, yeah sure. you know, it's the bottom line every month also matters. Yeah. Um, if we had uh, cash flow and liquidity, we would give our whole team's energy into just realizing renewable energy in Malaysia and teaching the youth how they too can get involved and do this. energy is being produced in Malaysia right now it's like I, I learned that off Mary uh, like 90% of space on fuel and gas and burning coal right so if energy is a battlefield and uh, it is completely controlled by the big corporation they're Correct. huge and like kind of have yeah, a huge market share Correct. how do you see yourself as a, such a tiny small organization and it's like how like how how does it work all right so since energy is a big players game we're going to let the big players be big players and do what big players do, right? That's not our problem. Mm -hmm. We're here for the little guys. Mm -hmm. We're here for all the others like us, all the youths of today. You know, we know that we want to make a difference. And when we tried to make a difference, we struggled because of these big players. When we wanted to build a bicycle generator, when we wanted to access engineering facilities in the country, when we wanted to get penetrate university students to be able to get them on board, it was a huge struggle and it was not easy. So we're going to set it up right mm -hmm. so that the other people who come after us, the youths of tomorrow, mm -hmm. they're going to be able to use BGBG space and there are going to be BGBG workshops all over the country. Just pop in, go there, hang out with like-minded people, mm -hmm. be able to speak to passionate seniors who can help you and advise you on how you can improve your design. Nice. And you know, then the big players become irrelevant. Yeah. You know, the, the energy companies, they can keep doing what they do until the time comes when there is a huge enough traction that they want to adopt the technologies that they have and they have to look to us for the answers. <laughs> sehr viele Leute im Moment davon profitieren, wie die Welt heute aufgebaut ist. Und ähm, die haben Interesse daran, dass es nicht verändert und sich nicht verschiebt. Und Leute halten fest an der Situation, wo sie sind und die werden sich, die werden sich festkrallen. Diese Art des Problems ist halt weltweit. Und ähm, kann halt auch eigentlich nur gelöst werden, wenn man weltweit daran zusammenarbeitet und sagt so, ja, okay, das Verhalten, was wir jetzt haben, ist nicht das Richtige, wir müssen eigentlich uns überlegen, wie wir uns verändern wollen. Es gibt verschiedene Ideen, wie man in Zukunft Energie erzeugen kann. Eine große ist halt das Sonnenfeuer auf der Erde zu haben, also Kernfusion. Quasi genau im Gegensatz zu Atomkernspaltung, einfach eine sehr saubere Energie. Und das ist etwas, wo viele Menschen, glaube ich, immer wieder denken oder viele Wissenschaftler, dass man denkt so, ja cool, es wäre super, wenn wir das hätten. Und man eigentlich immer denkt, ja in 30 Jahren oder so müssen wir es hinkriegen. Und das ist aber schon irgendwie, das denkt man 50 Jahre lang, dass das eben eins von diesen Themen, die sehr, sehr komplex sind. Und natürlich hat alles irgendwo noch einen Haken, aber wir brauchen Ideen. Wir brauchen Energie, um, um das Leben zu bauen, was wir leben. So, und es gibt ja auch Alternativen, die sind gut und die funktionieren. Ne? Ähm, und das ist super. Und ähm, warum können wir da nicht so schnell hin wie möglich? So, warum, warum verhaften wir in einer Zeit, wo das Alte immer schön geredet wird und man nicht sieht, welche Effekte es hat? Das verstehe ich nicht.